Hello everybody and welcome back to Siobhan Shree TV and I'm back at again with another video. Are you, are you proud of me? The consistency? Can we just, we're not going to gloss over this. You, just, you see it. Shout out to all my new subscribers. Thank you guys for joining me on this journey and being a part of the CC community. My new subscribers, I, I see you. I see you in the back. I saw you did something with your hair. I like that. Those of you guys who've been my A1 since day ones, come on, you know what time. Come on, bring it in. Oh yes. Oh, I love our group hugs. Socially distancing, emotionally available. Yes, ma'am. Today's topic, how to have a conversation with anybody. I know, I know. You may be saying, but Siobhan, I'm shy. But Siobhan, I'm scared. But Siobhan, I'm awkward. I hear you. It's okay, don't worry. Let's talk about how to have a conversation with anybody. In this day and age, in this culture and society, it's, oh, the devil is a liar. While I'm recording. What was I saying? Jog my memory. Come on, CC community. Ah, yes, I got it. We live in a multimedia kind of generation. You know, although we are more connected than ever, technology wise, there is still a disconnect in our human interactions. And so this video is all about how you can have a conversation with anybody because you may be a pretty good texter, but when it comes to when you're in person, when you're on the first date, can you make it through the first date? Some of us have been on these dating apps and swiping and swiping and swiping, wondering why we can't sustain a conversation long enough to make it to the second and third date. So first things first, you need to say their name. Say my name, say my name. You need to say their name, okay? Not only do you need to say their name, but you need to say it frequently. Say their name throughout the conversation. Don't make it creepy, but once you find out their name, say it over and over. You look so good, Janet. Tony, you, you're that guy, okay? Braxton? Why did I say Tony Braxton? What, was, what is wrong with me? <laughs> There is no sweeter sound to the human ear than the sound of your name. Whenever you find out what their name is, try to include their name within the conversation, okay? Um, next thing, compliment them. Compliment them. Now, don't do it out of manipulation. Don't do it in order to take advantage of someone. What I'm saying is compliment them. If you genuinely see something on them that you like, if you want to spark up a conversation, Genuinely compliment them on something that they have. And, oh my gosh, I love your earrings. Where did you get those? Oh my gosh, I love those shoes. Girl, your brows. We're not going to gloss over the brows. I see it. We see it. Girl, your hair is laid. Who did you, who'd you go to to get your hair done? You do your own hair. Girl, there are ways that you can just spark that conversation by complimenting them. It's a man, you see a handsome man. Um, you know, you could, I love that shirt that you have on. Oh, I love that tie. Touch the tie. I love that tie you have on. Oh, wow. You look so, you, wow. You smell so good. I love your cologne. It really suits you. It smells so manly. Trying to, trying to help y'all out. Okay. You trying to flirt, flirt. I'm gonna do another video on how to flirt too, but let's move on to the next point. <laughs> Be inquisitive. What does this mean? Don't be afraid to ask questions. Be inquisitive about something that they have on, something that they're drinking, something that they're eating, you know, stuff like that. Let's say you're at a bar and you want to spark up a conversation with a guy, right? You know, you're sitting there, he's right on side of you and you just be like, oh my gosh, what are you drinking? Does it taste good? Is it strong or is it kind of sweet? Oh, I don't do strong drinks. <laughs> but just have that kind of interaction. Yeah, so be inquisitive. Where are you from? You, don't, I detect kind of an accent. Are you from here? Where are you from? Oh, what, you just moved here. That's amazing. See what I'm saying? You gotta be inquisitive. You gotta, and being inquisitive requires you to be observant. You gotta be observant of your surroundings, of what is around you, of what people are dressing like, what people are acting like, who is in the room, and who are you drawn to? Be aware of yourself and be observant of what's around you so you can kind of figure out and gauge of like, okay, is the kind of conversation I'm trying to strike up, is it even appropriate for the occasion and the setting, okay? So, you know, if you're at a gala, 
Don't be over here using, you know, dirty jokes and stuff like that. We don't do that. All right. You need to figure out the time and the place to act the way that you, it's very situational here. Okay. You need to figure out, read the room and be inquisitive, but read the room and figure out what is appropriate for where you are. That's a good one too. Also, find commonalities, find common ground, find something that you guys have in common, right? Find the similarities, um, you know, because at the end of the day, we're all human beings. I know that you may be shy or a little bit nervous or a little bit awkward. Some may even say that you're a little bit weird. That's okay. People call me weird too. What I'm saying is this, when you're trying to spark up a conversation with somebody, it's important that you realize that we're all human we're all human beings. We all bleed the same blood, okay? All of our blood is red, okay? All of us are the same. We are human beings. We have experiences that are the same. We all get embarrassed. We all get stressed. We all get hungry. We all need to drink. So rest in the fact that they're probably nervous too. They're probably worried that you're not going to like them too. They're probably anxious and nervous too. So like, don't stress out, but find the commonalities. Everybody wears clothes. Everybody eats. Everybody drinks. Everybody sleeps. Everybody, everybody has a job, should at least, but everybody has a job. Everybody has different things that they're interested in. Everybody has hobbies. Everybody has passions. Everybody has dreams. So... Just find common things that all human beings would be interested in or like or whatever. Just start a conversation by, you know, basically pointing out the commonalities. So I always do the I see. You know, I see that this music is really good here. What, what kind of music do you like? Who are your favorite artists? Or what's your favorite song? Oh, wow, I see you're reading this book. What, who's your favorite author? What's a book that changed your life? These are good questions to ask, I'm just saying. So the next one is be well-rounded. Be well-rounded. You need to be well-rounded because when you're engaging in conversation, you need to have some content. You need to have some substance. You need to have something other than, oh yeah, great, wow. You need to have more than just generic answers, okay? You need to be reading books reading articles, reading blogs, you know, spending time with the Holy Ghost and he can give you some wisdom, but also, you know, watching content on YouTube that's going to feed your spirit and feed your mind and help you to think and interact with people better like this channel. Make sure that you are feeding yourself with things that are worth saying, valuable information, information that is a wide array. Okay, so you need to learn a little bit about psychology, some philosophy, some religion, some art, music, literature, food, wine pairings, you know, whatever it is, but just figure out different, you know, facts from all over. You need to be well-rounded so that wherever you are, whatever room that you've gotten into, you need to be able to interact with all people. You need to, even in the Bible, it says you need to be all things to all people. You need to be able to shift yourself from place to place and person to person that every conversation is situational, okay? It depends on where you are. Now, you are still true to yourself. You are still a diamond. You still understand the value and the worth that you bring to the table, okay? So you're not going to act out of character just because you're in a strange environment. But all I'm saying is you need to tilt and shift and you're not going to talk to everybody the same way at the same time. So you got to be well-rounded. That means you got to be multidimensional. You're not just one way all the time. Be able to be all things to all people at all times. Okay, next thing, be calculated. I know it sounds strange. We're talking about conversation here. So why would you tell me to be calculated? Hear me out. There is an art to conversation. I mentioned this in my um, how to be an active listener video. So check that out. But the art of conversation is kind of like a dance. There's one person who leads and the other person that follows. This is about to get deep. Conversation is a lot like chess, okay? See, you could have in your mind the way that you think a conversation is gonna go, but somebody could strategically move the conversation to be something else, okay? Don't believe me? A lot of men do this. They will slowly shift the conversation to become sexual. Come on, I know you've experienced this before where you'll be talking to a man and everything seems like it's cool and it's innocent and all of a sudden everything turns sexual very quickly. 
Why? Because they are strategically planning out the conversation. And you, as a rebuttal and as a defense and as a counter argument, you need to be able to strategically plan out the argument and have your own strategy and your own game plan as well. Strategize about what you're going to say, how you're going to say it, when you're going to say it, okay? And how you're going to shift the conversation. You need to be calculated and strategic with your conversation, right? An example of shifting the conversation, right? Let's say somebody asks you, oh, what are you up to? Instead of saying nothing, chilling, laying down, you could say, oh, well, actually, I'm about to go and do a Bible study really quick. That way, the conversation can shift and they can start to talk about their relationship with God. If they go to church, if they love the Lord, when's the last time they prayed? When's the last time they did a devotional? When's the last time they've been at somebody's church? You can, you can learn a lot. And honestly, I'm gonna tell you this. If the conversation starts getting dry, when you're talking about the Lord, that's a red flag. You need to back it up. Okay. Hallelujah. Get up out of there. There are so many different variations of where the conversation can go. But at the end of the day, you still need to kind of be in control of where the conversation is going. Now, if your intent is to listen to a person, you allow them to lead. But if your intent is to get specific details, specific things, like you really want to understand what what they're about, what they like, what they're into, you can shift the conversation in such a way by being calculated, being strategic about what you say and how you say it and what kind of conversation you're trying to end up having. Next thing, make people feel comfortable. Sit down, relax, grab a snack, honey, get comfortable. You want to make people feel comfortable around you. So this is another part with the complimenting thing, you know, like, let's say you're meeting a friend of a friend be like, Hey, I've heard so much, so many amazing things about you. You seem like such a kind person. And then just seeing you in person, I'm just so excited to just really get to be able to put a face with the name. So tell me more about yourself. See, when you do stuff like that, you've already, that person's guard is down. See, you could sit up here and try to be inquisitive all day and ask them all these burning questions and things like that. You could try, but guess what? If that person doesn't know you, they may, they may be a little defensive. They may be like, why do you want to ask me so many questions? Why are you so curious about who I am? Why are you trying to ask me all these deep, intimate, personal questions? And I don't even know you like that. We're strangers to one another. You need to make them feel comfortable. There's a way that you can say things to people to let them know that we're in this together. I think even using things like we and us and our Things like that, it makes it sound more unified, like we're more together in this experience instead of two separate entities having a conversation. We are having a conversation. We are sharing information. We are interacting together. So the more that you kind of make them feel comfortable, make them feel like this is a shared experience and you're excited to be around them, you're comfortable to be around them. You have a warm, inviting presence about you that like you have this magnetism. This is how you create that kind of magnetism, this charisma, this charm, this elegance, this kind of appeal that it's like you can talk to anybody, okay? You need to practice on strangers, okay? How many times have you seen a girl that looks cute and you want to compliment her shoes and you low-key feel like y'all would be really good friends, but because you're nervous and you're scared and you're shy, okay, and you're awkward sometimes, you don't compliment her. Now you will be over here, yes, queen, we see you, queen, you is popping, queen. Like you'll be like, the inches, yes, the waist, okay, we see you highlight... We stand the queen. You'll say all this stuff online, but when you see them in person, you don't want to keep that same energy. So make it make sense. Friend, you need to practice on strangers. Talk to the guy at the coffee shop. Talk to the old lady at the grocery store. Talk to the cashier over at the gas station. Talk to these people. These people are not going to bite. One of the things that I love to do when I talk to strangers is I like to walk in, you know, with a smile on my face, even though I got the mask on, I be smiling with my eyes and I basically just be like, Hey, how's it going today? You having a good day? That's good. Y'all been busy today. Especially if it's like a cashier or somebody be like, Hey, have y'all been busy today? 
Oh, yeah, I believe it. Yeah. Wow, that's crazy. Well, I hope you have a good one. And move on, move out, get out of there. You know, you don't have to be, it don't have to be long, but you just need to go and get into the habit of putting yourself in uncomfortable situations because you're just going to be uncomfortable. Life is uncomfortable and you need to make the most out of uncomfortable situations. What's wrong with telling an old lady at the grocery store, good morning, how you doing today, ma'am? Oh, I'm doing well. Thank you. I'm blessed and highly favored. All right now. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. I'm being good. I'm, I'm trying, I'm doing my best. What's wrong with talking to older people? What's wrong with talking to, you know, the cashiers? What's wrong with talking to the waiter and the waitresses that are, you know, that are serving you at your table? What's wrong with that? There's nothing wrong with it. You can talk to these people. They are human beings. Just like just because they got a name tag on does not mean that they're any less human or that they deserve any less respect. But yeah, you need to be able to talk to people from all ages and stages of life. So even if it's somebody who's in middle school or who's in primary school or high school, you need to be able to talk to everybody. Keep up with the latest lingo. Keep up with all the stuff that, you know, you see on 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 TikTok and Instagram and all that stuff, like make conversation with them and find out what their commonalities are too. Don't just brush the kids off to the side just because they're a kid. That's not cool. Like if that if you know that that child is really into cheerleading, like talk to them about stuff involving cheerleading. If you know that that child is really into video games, talk to them about video game stuff. Like you just need to find out about what somebody's sweet spot is. What is the thing that we have in common and go for that. But talk to strangers. Okay. I know all our life we said, don't talk to strangers, but y'all talk to strangers online every day. Okay. You can talk to a person, especially if they don't now use discernment, honey. Don't talk to everybody. Okay. But also at the same time though, it's like, what's wrong with speaking to people and just saying good morning, good afternoon, good evening. How are you? Um, another thing that you can do that I find is really helpful as well is, um, to do an activity together, do something that you don't necessarily have to give that person eye contact the entire time. Right. So like, let's say you are, let's say you have some church members coming over to your house you know, while the men are outside frying the fish or barbecuing, the ladies are inside, you know, finishing the last touches or setting the table. You know, that's just how we do. Or, you know, even like if it's a holiday Christmas party or whatever, there are, you know, the women go into the kitchen and we bake cookies together. That's just what we do at my house. OK, we, we you know, we bake the desserts and prepare different things together as women in the kitchen. And men will be in the living room talking about sports, talking about whatever they be talking. About. I don't know what men talk about, girl. But, you know, the men do that where the men go outside and they work on manly stuff, look at cars or whatever they do. And. And we all do activities together, something. You chop up some green onions, honey, while I, you know, make this roof for this gravy. You know, that's just what we do down here in the South. So it's just like, make sure you have your hands busy doing something, you know, so that way that person feels like their guard is kind of let down. They can just kind of talk or even like, let's say you're out in public, you can people watch with somebody and be like, hey, look at that over there, you know, or like, let's say, you know, you're with a child. Always kind of keep some coloring books close by, you know, or even if you're at a restaurant or something, have a little, you know, that sometimes they serve the coloring, coloring sheets and color packets and stuff. When the children have all the coloring stuff, you get one too and you color with them. That's the quickest way to bond with a child is to like do things with them. Okay. Make them feel special. Like if all the kids are, you know, I know there's a such thing as grown folks conversation. I get that. But if you're trying to connect with kids too, like get down on their level and play with them. Okay. Like get down on their level and talk with them. They don't deserve any less respect. And I think I want this to be my final point. Make sure that you are respectful to everyone. Give everybody the same amount of respect. You should treat the CEO the same way you treat the janitor. You should treat the cafeteria lady the same way you treat the principal. No matter what age or stage they're in, whether they are a child or they are a grown up, or whether they are elderly, you need to talk to everybody with the same level of respect. Give your pastor the same kind of respect that you give your boss at your job. Be respectful to your parents. 
Be respectful to your grandparents. Be respectful to a stranger on the street. Be respectful to those who work in retail because they see so many Karens and so many, so much disrespect and so many coupon clippers and people who are rude to them every single day. Be nice to those who serve you because those who are the servants of the world are the ones that God wants to promote. Okay, so be careful how you talk to people because you never know who you're entertaining. You could be entertaining angels unaware. So be sure that you're being nice to everybody. Okay, don't be rude. Be respectful to everyone. Okay, so I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I definitely had fun just talking to you guys and having a chance to just give you some of my wisdom when it comes to carrying out conversations with anybody because at the end of the day, it's kind of difficult sometimes, especially when you have your own nerves and anxiety and insecurity about, will they like me? Will they think I'm awkward or weird? But I guarantee you, like I said earlier, we're all human. We all get nervous sometimes and we all crave interaction and we all crave connection. So just keep that in mind. The next time that you want to spark up a conversation with a cute boy, maybe, or even with a church member, or maybe with somebody in your family or a stranger on the street, keep in mind that we all just want connection. I hope this was helpful to you guys. And I hope that you guys love this video. Make sure that you like this video. So that way I know that you want to see more charisma and feminine charm kind of videos, you know? So in the meantime, between time, girl, wherever you are, whatever you're doing, I hope you put on those post notifications and that you hit that subscribe button. We're waiting. Did you hit it? Did you get it? Did you get it? Hit subscribe and remember to stay snatched and saved. Bye. <laughs>